On March 15th, fourth-year medical students all over the country will open their letters and find out where they will go for residency. Behind all this madness, drama, sleepless nights, and probably some crying, is a computer algorithm that actually determines where you go. What I want to do in this video is try to show you some of the principles that this algorithm works under, which will hopefully let all of you maximize your rank list for match day. Before we start though, for those of you who really don't care about the algorithm itself, the answer to the biggest question that people usually have about the match is that you don't have to play games. That is, you don't need to play guessing games about who might rank you highly and who might not. Rank the programs you want to go to the most, the highest, even if you think you have no chance of going there. And I'll explain why this is as we go along. So the algorithm first. Now I'm not going to show you step by step down to the last detail how it works. Instead, I'm going to make some simplifications so that I get the big principles and important points across. So each of us, aka the students, interview at a bunch of programs and then rank those programs by preference from number one to whatever. Similarly, a program interviews a bunch of students and ranks them in some order of their liking from one to whatever. Now, for the sake of simplification, let's say that we have a school super awesome that everyone in the world ranks as their number one. And let's say that this school has 10 positions available. In this situation, since everyone equally ranks Super Awesome as number one, the 10 students that Super Awesome ranks the highest go there. And let's say that these 10 students are these guys right here. The main point here is that once a pool of students that would like to go to a certain school is defined, those students in that same pool that are ranked highest on that school's internal rank list go there, assuming there are enough positions available. Part of that is pretty intuitive, but the part that's not is how to define that pool of students. To illustrate this, let us continue with the example. Now, what happens to those students that rank super awesome number one, but didn't match there? Or these students right here. Let's assume that all the students who didn't match into super awesome had slightly less awesome as their number two. So, all of those students who didn't match into their number one choice, but had slightly less awesome as their number two, will then pool together with all students who had slightly less awesome as their number one. In this case, ignore the assumption that everyone in the world had super awesome ranked number one. Let's say that slightly less awesome also has 10 positions open, and that their internal rank list looks like this. So out of this pool of students, which includes individuals who rank slightly less awesome as their number one, and those who didn't match into their number one, but had slightly less awesome as their number two, the 10 students that slightly less awesome ranks the highest on their list will match into slightly less awesome. And let's say that those 10 students are these guys. Whether or not those students had slightly less awesome as number one or two, doesn't really factor into Slightly Less Awesome's internal rank list. Now, notice that Slightly Less Awesome's internal rank list includes some people who already match into Super Awesome. And let's say those guys are 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. And as a result, these individuals are ignored, which means Slightly Less Awesome will have to go further down in its rank list to get its 10 positions filled than Super Awesome. Now, the main point here is that a pool of students that potentially can go to a school includes everyone who places that school as their number one, or didn't match into their number one but had that school as their number two, or didn't match into their number one or two but had that school as their number three, etc. Essentially, assuming that you didn't match into a higher choice, you are not at a disadvantage compared to those who do rank a school higher. At this point, if you've been drinking a Kool-Aid, you're probably wondering, okay, I understand the principles behind it, but what you're telling me doesn't explain how everyone gets matched into different programs. Well, this is why I said this would be a gross simplification. The examples that I've shown are all on a static level, meaning looking specifically at one moment in time. While in reality, the computer looks at this dynamically, meaning that it takes one student at a time and adds that student into this mess and then calculates how that affects everyone in the system then does this again for the next student, and the next, etc., until every student has been accounted for. To illustrate this, let's say the first 10 people added to this by the computer all rank super awesome as their number one. Since the computer is just starting, all 10 of these students are tentatively matched into super awesome. 
The 11th student that the computer picks also has Super Awesome as their number one. In this situation, there are more students ranking Super Awesome as their number one, 11, and want to match there than there are spots available, 10. So what happens is that someone has to be removed from Super Awesome. To determine this, the computer looks at how all 11 students are ranked in the program's internal rank list and will remove the student who is the lowest. That student who is the lowest now can't match into his or her number one choice, and so will tentatively be placed into his or her number two choice, slightly less awesome, which now has nine spots open after the student is placed. I say tentatively because if there are enough students who have slightly less awesome ranked highly and are ranked higher on the program's internal rank list as they are added, then this student will be moved down to his or her third choice, etc. The computer does this for every student one by one in the country, and the result is the match list. Simple, right? Now, here are the main takeaways from this video. Number one, the NRMP is both student and program friendly, but it's probably slightly more friendly to students because the core of the algorithm plays around a student's preferences first. Number two, you don't have to play games. That is, you don't need to play guessing games about who might rank you highly and who might not. Rank the programs you want to go to the most, the highest, even if you think you have no chance of going there. Because even if you don't match at your highest choices and drop down to a lower choice, you're not at a disadvantage in terms of matching at those programs compared to people who did rank those programs highly. And lastly, congratulations on almost finishing medical school and good luck with the match. Thank you.